when it came to Hiroshima, 54% of their population had died mm. as a result of the little boy bomb. Also, remember, the estimates are based off the concept that they thought that these bombs were just going to kill everybody clean. Yeah. That they were just right. going to just show up. It was going to explode everybody. They were all going to burst into dust, and we wouldn't even have to clean anything up. We would just go and see this cleared land mm -hmm. and be so happy that we did it. And we just have the number. We'd say, look, that's it. Well, eventually we did develop that, though. It's called the neutron bomb. Wow. <laughs> nice. Man, there ain't nothing we can't do. That's right, Johnny <laughs> Neutron. In the days and weeks after the bombing, 71% of Hiroshima's population and 69% of nice. Nagasaki. <laughs> no, Henry. No. This is not that kind of 69. No. This is bad 69. 69% of Nagasaki and 71% of Hiroshima experienced to some degree what was first called atom bomb illness, but soon came to be known as radiation sickness. To put into perspective just how much radiation was created by Little Boy and Fat Man, the nuclear incident at Chernobyl created a radiation exposure that peaked at 500 rads. And that actually converts to 1,500 groovies. <laughs> wow! That is crazy! And 3,000 radicals. <laughs> Indeed, that is a big bomb. Actually, that's what rads is sh short for, is radicals. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. That's sure. fun. Groovies is just when you're trying to talk to hip guys. <laughs> yes, groove indeed. I've heard it's in the heart. But <laughs> it is. It's actually a serious condition for a lot of people. Yeah, I know. By comparison, the in-air doses of gamma rays from the uranium bomb at Ground Zero in Hiroshima, that was over 10,000 rads. I mean, you're just saying numbers here, buddy. I, I don't know how to quantify it's, that. It, a lot of gunk. Yeah. A lot but, of gunk? Okay, think about how deadly Chernobyl was. Like, they talk mm -hmm. about the elephant foot. They talk about how dangerous Chernobyl was. That's 500. Okay. Hiroshima? That's 10,000. Oh yeah. It's a much larger it number. It's, it's a big. larger number. It's bigger. It's more <laughs> groovies than the last one. Worst yeah. thing about having an elephant foot is it never forgets. forgets. Never it does. Never go. forgets. But what was the horrors of Chernobyl? But what would a foot need to forget? Oh, just where to go. <laughs> yeah, if I was a foot, I wouldn't, remember, I wouldn't remember every single time I stepped on dog poop. Oh, forget it. Yeah. That's Na gone. Well, Nagasaki was even worse. That was 25,100 rats. That's, fucking... That's a higher number than the ones before. Yeah. It's almost not groovy at all. Yeah. Wow. All the science people are just mad. Mm. Yeah, mad at us. <laughs> well, no, it just means it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Each rad c increases the chances of radiation sickness mm. and increases how bad it's going to get. And I'm about to get into the worst of how bad it gets. Mm -hmm. As a result, cases of serious radiation sickness reached three miles from ground zero. Now, those who didn't die in the blast or soon after the blast seemed to improve in the days afterwards, mm. giving the doctors a little bit of hope that maybe the worst was over. But within a week, radiation sickness began to take hold as those who were severely exposed began to fall apart from the inside out. Oh, I don't like that. Because they really thought that it would take a long time to die from radiation. The Manhattan exposure. Project scientists. Yes, yeah. they thought that. Why would they think that? Well, it's because every other uh, example we've had of radiation exposure mm -hmm. showed someone that you got basically a little bits at a time. And they thought that eventually you would kind of grow you get sick you got madame curie yeah sure. right was an example of died it. at 64 died at 64 okay. but younger than she should have but like the idea is well, like she still like had a life and they kind of thought that this would be that they would hold true no matter what that you kind of would get these things they, they, they were wrong yeah yeah we'll see what happens in florida they're paving the highways now with radioactive materials so we'll see what happens mm. god another reason to not go well i mean everyone's gonna be dead soon <laughs> <laughs> well Radiation sickness usually began with hair falling out in large clumps, bleeding from the mouth, gums, throat, rectum, and urinary tract soon followed, mm. literally bleeding out of your dick. Oh, gosh. And that was in addition to nausea and loss of appetite. Then came- Yeah, I could see the last of loss of appetite. Yeah. I, I mean, just the, because of the mirror. Just the whole thing is yeah. pretty not appetizing. Yeah. Then came the bloody vomit and diarrhea as the victim's body began to seriously hemorrhage. So terrified were people of radiation sickness that many survivors woke up every morning and they tugged on their hair to see if they were the next to die of a condition that was, at the time, barely understood but greatly feared. Mm. As we now know, radiation sickness affects the body by causing rapid cell division, but the radiation itself 
temporarily suppresses the action. It's Mm. delayed. And once that wears off, internal tissues and organs rapidly begin to collapse into an unrecognizable bloody mess. Yeah, you you it's like what the machine from the fly does, but it does it like inside of your body over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to make sure no fly sneaks in there. No. Mm. Yeah. The radiation causes massive tissue death, massive hemorrhage, and massive infection. This caused one doctor to compare the radiation death sicknesses to the Black Death of the 1300s in terms of the sheer number of deaths and the carnage that came with them. I got a really good email Mm. this morning as I was researching that I thought was real. It was uh, he this guy. He was great, but he was basically saying, "Imagine just the spookiness of radioactive material in general. It is rocks that come from the earth that." glow they literally glow in in dark they look at it and they dissemble any sort of matter that is in a circle around it and so imagine that mm. vaporized just like spread across all this stuff and all it does is turn everything into fucking soup yep i don't like it when autopsies were performed on victims in Nagasaki, doctors found upon opening the bodies that the internal veins had been torn to shreds. And as far as the organs went, they were so badly destroyed that they had begun to decay even before the victim had themselves died. Well, the organs not... died first. Uh, okay. Oh, God. Well, you, don't want, you don't want that. It's quite you want a, quitting. You want to time it. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. that's a, it was millennials. <laughs> the organs were made of millennials. You, have you heard millennials have ruined the having an internal organs business. <laughs> another, another casualty of millennial culture. We're the greatest generation. <laughs> well, as a result, when the bodies were cremated, they gave off a strange smell. Most assumed that it was because of the radiation. But as those experienced in cremation pointed out at the time, it was in fact because the bodies being burned were simultaneously in two different stages of decay. See, a lot of times what I wow. find is that if you don't know what that flavor is, it's fish sauce. Oh, it could be. <laughs> uh, that's common. That is common. But I don't know if that's really the case here. No. I'm surprised they actually went the burning route. I don't know what the safest way is. That, that, to that is technically the, still that's the it? safest way. Yeah. yeah, that's the safest way. And it's uh. also the only way that, I mean, they're not going to dig. You know, there's right. no there's no other way to get rid of these bodies. And they, they also Blood. know that, you know, the more bodies you have, the more disease you have. Right. You've got to get if you have a bunch of bodies, you got to get rid of them fast. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Every Sunday. I know. <laughs> I got a bunch of bodies. Oh, God damn it. I, it's kind of nice because it's like that's kind of me and Kissel's bonding time. Yeah. yeah. When I can go, I help him with his pyramid of bodies. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. we're not because. Because I can't ask questions about that, yeah, I can ask questions about him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I can get to know him more, and exactly. I find out stuff like you know he loves the color orange. Wow, I don't hate it. Green is my favorite color, huh. but orange is fine. <laughs> Some part of our, and then I was just like, "Is this the fuck? Is this your fucking a look alike of your mother?" Yeah. Oh, you know I, mean? I would that, never do that to my of them. mother. <laughs> <laughs> I just want her near me, <laughs> full of holes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. By the eight week mark, though, deaths by acute radiation poisoning began to cease, although the long term effects carried on for decades. Leukemia cases began two years after and peaked at eight years after, mm. but every survivor had a far higher chance than the average person of all manner of cancers for the rest of their lives. I ex- My conspiracy theory little thought in my own head is I thought that maybe that they thought that these diseases would, because they he thought they, thought they were long-term things that would slowly come about. So I figured in my mind that maybe they thought, well, once they the Manhattan start, Project. The Manhattan Project people, guys, that like at some point we'll start to see this information come out, but it'll be decades after the fact when they'll have written all these exposés. We won't have to deal with it till later on. We'll all be dead by the time they're talking about the actual like repercussions of these bombings. But it turned out it was day three. Yeah. Now, as far as what the people behind the Manhattan Project knew about the possible side effects of the bomb, the dangers of radiation in at least a lab setting have been well documented since the 1920s. As we said, Marie Curie, like they knew that her journals were still radioactive. And they can make you sick. They'll make you sick. Being around them, it makes you sick. Yeah, if you're around them for a long time or if you're exposed to like Marie Curie died many years later because of how many x-rays she was exposed to during World War One. I also got some good thing on the radium. You know, it's still not good to just be touching radium. No. But you got to ingest it. You, but you shouldn't do any of it. I would say let <laughs> radium use a glove. Use a glove. 